Well, good morning. Today is Tuesday, the 7th of April, and I invite you to prepare and enter into uh, morning prayer, our worship this morning for Tuesday, April 7th. Our order of worship for morning prayer is uh, found on page 12 of your Book of Common Prayer, where we will begin with the confession. And again, as Anglicans who enter into our worship, I invite you to stand for praise, uh, sit for listening, and kneel for prayer as you are able, understanding everybody has different circumstances and conditions. Uh, so we will begin uh, this morning with morning prayer. If you would turn to page 12, we will start there as soon as I complete uh, the opening sentence, which is taken from the Book of Lamentations for Holy Week. Is it nothing to you all who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which is brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. Continuing now on page 12, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no help in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The grace to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was at the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us adore him. We continue with the Benighty, found on page 14. O oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily, heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with a thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works, forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, of whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us adore him. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 71, found on page 357. That's Psalm 71, verses 1 through 11, page 357 of the Book of Common Prayer. In you, O Lord, have I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Rescue me and deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my rock and my refuge, where I may always return. You have promised to help me, for you are my stronghold and my fortress. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the ungodly out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel. 
For you, O Lord God, are the one I long for. You are my hope, even from my youth. Though through you I have been upheld ever since I was born. You took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall be always of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. O let my mouth be filled with your praise, that I may sing of your glory all the day long. Cast me not away in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails me. For my enemies speak against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Pursue him and take him, for there is none to deliver him. Go not far from me, O God, my God. Make haste to help me. The Glory of Patrick, page 16. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first lesson is taken from the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 through 6. Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother. He named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too like a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserve of Israel. I will make you as a light to the nations, and my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle is the Benedictus Est Domini, page 18. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths and the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Our second lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31. St. Paul writes, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Is not God made foolish? the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews 
and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, that the one who boasts Boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 3 is found on page 81. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all their righteous offspring. You made the heavens and the earth, and all with its vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand, you do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart, and I make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me in the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, in accordance with your great mercy, and I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. Our next lesson is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, beginning with verse 37 and uh, continuing 37, 38, and then picking up with verses 42 uh, through 50. John 12, beginning with the 37th verse. Though Jesus had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him so that the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he heard from us? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, for again Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. Nevertheless, many, even of the authorities, believed in Jesus, but for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it, for they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. And Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me, believe not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever believes me sees him who sent me. I have come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. 
The one who rejects me and does not receive my words has a judge, and the word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. For I have not spoken of my own authority, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment that I what to say and what to speak. And I know that the, his commandment is eternal. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 4 is found on page 82. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that for which I purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Come, O Holy Spirit, come. Harden not our hearts, as in the rebellion that we and our fathers have demonstrated in the past. But soften our hearts through the gift of grace and the Holy Spirit, that we would hear your word and accept the truth from your Son, that we might be saved. And strengthen our witness, O Lord, that we would not be selfish which is with this knowledge, but would be used by you to share the good news of Jesus Christ with everyone that we meet. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would like to reflect for a moment on this passage that we just heard from the Gospel of John. And it said this, verse 43, For they loved the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. All of us have, as we say, um, a time to fish or cut bait. That's true for everyone. A time where we acknowledge the truth that has been presented before us or we ignore it to our own peril. The great danger that was faced back then 2,000 years ago is still the greatest danger that you and I face today. And that is the danger of hardening our hearts. Now, sometimes when we hear the passage of hardened hearts, it, 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 it attributes that to God. And we have to sort of scratch the surface and go below that a little bit to appreciate what's being said. Because God does not desire the death of sinners, but their salvation. Jesus came to save the sick. The essence of hardening a heart comes from the reception of that science is the study of the things that, quite frankly, are around us, the study of God's creation. It doesn't answer the questions of why. It simply studies that which is before it. And religion, Christianity, is not in conflict with science. Theology seeks to study God, to learn more about God. Science seeks to learn more about the creation. Both actually go hand in hand. And if you check out your history, you will see that the church is the one who started uh, and, and, and really um, grounded the Western um, 
pursuit of education. So they're not in conflict, and that's a false dichotomy uh, when you hear it, and I, I would say push back on that. But nonetheless, the temptations of this world is to seek some type of dis difference between the two. I'm a scientist, therefore I can't believe. My friends, lots of scientists are believers, now and in the past. Because they actually, as scientists, want to continue to learn and continue to seek, and they're not closed-minded. And if one has an open mind, one would seek to know, is there more? To, to seek those eternal questions. Is there more to life than what I see in front of me? Is there meaning and purpose to life? Is there something greater out there? And God has revealed himself. That's what the Bible is, is his his revelation to his creation. And so he reveals himself, and I invite people to study it, to study God's word, and, 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 to, and to seek to know who God is. But the danger remains. Are we seeking the approval of mankind? Are we seeking the approval of God? St. Paul wrote in the letter to the Corinthians that, you know, the, the, the Jews of the day were seeking signs. They wanted evidence. And the Greeks wanted wisdom. St. Paul says all of this is cast aside. All of this is laughable. Because God reveals himself as himself. And it challenges everyone. It challenges me as a person of faith. It challenges you. It challenges everyone because we all are tempted to make God into our image. Because that's something we can control. That's something that we can dictate to. And yet the challenge, of course, is we are made in God's image. And sadly, our ancestors were, were rebellious. Sadly, we are rebellious. Sadly, Satan seeks to corrupt the world and destroy it. And most importantly, men and women and children. That's the world we live in. If anything about this crazy lint that we're in, I would say this, it is more real today than it has been at least ever in my life. Where I have to ask, what is important? Is the building important? Is the trappings of religion important? They, they've been stripped away from us. What's important? I would argue, my friends, that the most important thing is our personal relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, empowered by the grace of the Holy Spirit. And the second is like it to love our neighbors as ourselves, to love humanity and creation as God loves humanity and creation. That's the summary of the law and the prophets, to love God completely and totally, to love our, natures, our neighbors as ourselves, but to realize the conviction that you and I are not capable of loving God completely and totally. We're not capable of loving others as we should. Those, those are not the comfortable words from the prayer book. They're words that challenge us and should demonstrate to us we need a Savior. Oh, the comfortable words are that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. The comfortable words from Christ is, those who are heavy laden and burdened, come to me. The comfortable words are the words that God so loved the world that he gave his son that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. Those are the words of comfort. And I would say in this Lent, and quite frankly for our life, these are the words that are important. The trappings are nice, but they're not essential. The relationship with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is essential. And so I invite you to use the remaining time in this Holy Week to get those priorities right. And like I said, we can't do it on our own, so I'm not telling you to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and try harder. 
I'm not saying that at all. In fact, what I'm saying, if, if you would allow me just to be literal, I'm saying sit down on the ground and throw dust and ashes in the air and say, Lord, I can't do this. I need Jesus Christ. I need the Holy Spirit. And then allow God to reach down in love and lift you up. And he might use a fellow Christian to do that. He might even use an atheist to do that. That's the truth. Amen. Speaking of the truth, the Apostles' Creed is that truth of faith in our church. And so I invite you now to stand as you're able, turn to page 20, and let us say the words of our faith as found in that baptismal creed, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us, and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord. The Collect of the Day for Tuesday of Holy Week. O Lord, our God, whose blessed Son gave his back to be, to be whipped and did not hide his face from shame and spitting, Give us grace to accept joyfully the suffering of the present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A collect for peace. O God, the author of peace and love and concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The second prayer for mission. O God, who have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, Pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers and intercessions and thanksgivings. Uh, you may record them in uh, the comments section or on the web page where we have a page dedicated uh, to prayer requests and uh, praise reports.
from the occasional prayers, prayer 50, for the medical professions. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, went about doing good and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people, continue in our hospitals and other places of healing his gracious work, that among us come console and heal the sick, grant to the physicians, nurses, and assisting staff wisdom and skill, diligence and patience, prosper their work, O oh Lord, protect them. And send down your blessing upon all who serve the suffering. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Page 25, uh, the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservations, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth our pray your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving of ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant the request. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, this concludes our worship this morning on the 7th of April, Tuesday in Holy Week. I invite you to join us again at 10 o'clock for uh, Spy Wednesday. That's Wednesday of Holy Week. It's called Spy Wednesday because on that day we remember with sadness that Judas Iscariot, who had decided to betray Christ, was spying out, seeking out an opportunity to betray him. And rather than make him sort of the, the whipping boy, we need to understand that all of us betray Christ. All of us in our sinfulness spy out opportunities to betray God and do what we want to do. And so this Spy Wednesday tomorrow is a day of reflection and contemplation. Uh, 10, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, we'll have morning prayer. 6.30, we will have an abbreviated form of what's called tenembrae, which is shadows. I say abbreviated because of our circumstances this year. I, I don't think it would be efficacious to go through that liturgy, but I want to honor that liturgy with you. So even though it's getting warm outside, kind of contemplate a sort of fireside chat uh, where we'll talk about tenembrae, the shadows that descend. Well, that's tomorrow. I also invite you to go to our webpage. You will find uh, an opportunity right on the homepage to order virtual Easter lilies. Uh, what that means, and, and you'll see it further explained, but uh, virtual Easter lilies, the concept is, is fairly simple. Um, you can give a virtual Easter lily in honor of someone, in thanksgiving of someone, in memory of someone, and that commemoration will be listed on our website uh, on Easter Day, uh, just like we do with normal Easter lilies. Now, if you decide, do you desire anonymity or, or that it be private, just simply indicate that on the form that we have on the web, website. It also is an opportunity for you to make a financial gift to support the mission and ministry of the church. So they go hand in hand. And so that's on the front page of our website. Also, we have a web page dedicated uh, to Holy Week. And that will have lessons, readings, resources. Uh, there are some resources, a sort of scavenger hunt that we are gonna put into play for tomorrow. And so um, uh, now in, in all honesty, I'm not sure I've gotten that far updating the web page. So that's my uh, task for this afternoon. Uh, but before evening tonight, God willing, 
I'll have that updated, and so there'll be an opportunity for you to gather some resources to be used throughout this week. And again, I invite and I appreciate those who've, done, who've already done it. Send me a video saying what Easter means to you, what Jesus Christ means to you. And I'm being very specific. I really don't want to hear about what a building means to you because buildings don't save us. What does Jesus Christ, your Savior, and your Lord mean to you? Because that's what Easter's about. And so shoot me a little video. You can film it on your phone, messenger it to me. Uh, I'm grateful I've already received one, and I would like to have more than that. Uh, also, you can uh, send it to me by text or email, and I will read it uh, on your behalf. So uh, please do that. And of course, I welcome selfies uh, of you in worship. And so this is just a way of staying connected because remember morning prayer is to connect us with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to connect us vertically. But we also need to stay connected horizontally. And one of the ways of doing that is through those activities, through personal phone calls, emails, check on family, check on friends, check on people you haven't seen for a while. It's been now more than a couple of weeks that we've been out of our buildings. Check on folks. Let them know how you're doing. Ask them how they're doing. Pray for the sick. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you next, uh, see you tomorrow.